But today we're going to pick up for part two of this lesson um, in 9.1. Uh, by applying these concepts to evaluating expressions that involve square roots, all right? So I want you to go ahead and write down these four problems. All right, go ahead and write down these four problems, please. Um, I want you to skip like three lines in between each problem, okay? Skip like three lines in between. You can write them side by side, all right? And then we're going to work through each one of these together. All right, so look at the first one, 5 times the square root of 36 plus 7. The first thing you need to understand, guys, is when a number is next to a square root, that means multiplication, okay? There's no addition sign, subtraction. When they're together like that, that means multiplication. So you are going to take the square root of 36. What is the square root of 36? 6. But that does not mean that you just bring the 5 down and now it's 56, so that's why it's so important that you understand that this is actually multiplication here. 5 times 6 plus 7. And 5 times 6 is 30 plus 7, 37. Okay. Um, now let's look at this top right problem. The square root of 81 squared. Well, we know according to the order of operations that we must evaluate what's inside the parentheses first. Elizabeth, do you need to move up here? Can you see okay? Yeah. All right, go ahead and face forward, please. All right, what is the square root of 81? <coughs> 9. And now I can square it, and what's 9 squared? Does anything look kind of uh, interesting to you about that problem? It is. Essentially, just you're doing the opposite, right? So that goes back to that rule we talked about at the beginning of the lesson, that squaring a number and taking the square root of a number, those are opposite operations, and they actually cancel each other out, and your answer will always be the original number. You get what I'm saying with that? Okay, so if that confuses you, just follow the steps. Take the square root and then square it. But if you understand that squaring and taking the square root essentially cancel each other out, then you'll know every time your answer is just the original number, okay? All right, so let's look at the bottom left problem now, all right? Now, in the previous example, when I had the square root of a fraction, there were perfect squares underneath the square root. Are these numbers perfect squares? No, they're not. So instead of taking the square root and getting some ridiculous decimal, why don't we go ahead and try to simplify the fraction and see what we end up with? And we possibly could end up with a perfect square. What is 18 divided by 2? It is 9. So now I have 1 fourth plus the square root of 9. Now, again, if those had been perfect squares underneath the square root, I don't need to reduce the fraction, just take the square root. But when they're not perfect squares, let's see what it looks like when it, the fraction is reduced. What is the square root of 9? Yes, it is 3. 1 fourth plus 3. Okay? Now, um, I do have kind of a small problem in that I'm adding fractions together. Oh. Maya? Oh, one yes. 3 over 1. Okay. So I need to make my denominators match up. Okay. So obviously I look at my smaller denominator. Can 1 go into 4? How many times would I have to multiply 1 by to get to 4? 4. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just multiply top and bottom by 4 to get my denominator to be 4. 1 fourth plus 12 fourths. Just as a refresher for you, when I'm adding fractions, I add my numerators, but I do not add my denominators. I only carry them over into my answer. What is 1 plus 12? over 4. I would accept this answer or you can change it back to a mixed number. How do you know what's going to be your whole number? 4 goes into 13. 
three times with how many left over? Three and one fourth. Okay? Yeah, I know. I know. But it's good to practice LCD. Okay? And that would only work if it was a whole number, too. Okay? All right, let's look at the bottom right one. I want you to go ahead and try to solve this one. All right? I've got like a 50-50 success rate on this problem uh, on the earlier classes, so I want to see who can get it right. Okay, so I need to take the square root first. 12 minus 3 times 5. The square root of 25 is 5. And remember, that shows multiplication. Multiplication. So now, here's the, here's the number one area I saw people messing up. They were subtracting before they multiplied. But we know order of operations says to multiply first. 12 minus 15 is negative 3. Negative 3. All right, questions on that? Okay, let's do two more. I'm just trying to show you like every possible scenario that you might see on your homework. All right, let's go ahead and do two more. Um, you've got another concept popping up here in one of these problems that we just talked about, so we'll see who can catch that. All right, go ahead and try to work out these two problems. Okay, so just like we talked about on the last slide, these are not perfect squares, 28 and 7, but I can go ahead and just reduce that fraction. What is 28 divided by 7? 4. four. So I've got the square root of 4 plus 2.4. And what is the square root of 4? 2 plus 2.4, which is 4.4. Okay? Now, on the next one, what did you, some of you noticed, and I could tell just by your work, some of you noticed something about this problem. What did you notice, Mason? Okay, that is important. That's definitely important. Anything else you noticed? Anything else you noticed? Do you guys remember what we said about squaring and then the square root? What happens? Yeah, they just kind of offset each other and cancel out, so then... The answer is just the original number. Whenever you square the square root of a number, all right? So that's going to be 15 minus 4, which is 11, all right? The square root of 4, just to kind of show you how it breaks down, the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 squared is 4. But I recognize that the square of something and the square root actually just cancel out, and my answer would just be the original number. All right, 4.4 and 11. You guys did really well on that. Okay, um, let's go ahead now and go to our last example, example five. Solving equations with square roots. So those inverse operations are really important. We know any time we're solving an equation, we must use inverse operations, meaning if addition is connected to the variable, we subtract. If subtraction is connected, we add to get the variable by itself. Well, now we have an exponent connected to our variable. Okay, so we've got to find a way to get rid of or do the inverse of squaring to get that variable by itself. All right, go ahead and write these down. Okay, so x squared equals 81. I have to get x by itself when something is raised to the second power, like we see here. The inverse operation would be to take the square root. Once we take the square root, that cancels out the exponent. That's what we were just talking about in the last slide. But if I take the square root of one side, I must also take the square root of the other side. All right, and the square root of 81 is 9. But that's not my final answer because I'm going to go ahead and erase my work real quick just so you can see the original problem. Do you see a radical in the original problem? No. So what is also true about your answer is that x could equal 9, but x could also equal negative 9. Okay? Because negative 9 times negative 9 is also positive 81. But instead of writing it twice, how else could we write our answer? Yes. So I don't want you to write it twice. I want you to write it with the positive negative, And then that would be your answer. Okay? So based on how we just did that one, I want you to do the top right problem. K squared equals 169. Go ahead and do that problem.
Okay, so I take the square root of both sides, and what's the square root of 169? Positive, negative 13. Who got that right? Positive, negative 13. Good. All right, now, what we notice on the bottom left problem is that there is now a number connected to our variable. Is it connected by addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division? Multiplication. multiplication. So if it's connected by multiplication, what do I have to do to cancel it to the other side? Divide. I have to do the opposite. Okay, now, the exponent part you're going to do last. You have to move everything else to the other side first. So if it's multiplication connected to A, I must divide both sides by 3. Now I have a squared equals, and again, calculators will be permitted, but that does not change the fact that you have to show work. What is 48 divided by 3? 16. Divide, I'm sorry, square root both sides to get a by itself, and a equals positive negative all right, let's look at the last problem. What do you notice now that's different with the last problem? Elizabeth? It's now not just... Yeah, it's technically... And that, is that what you were trying to say too? Okay, don't interrupt, guys. Make sure you're raising your hands. Is that what you're trying to say? It's now minus 6 also, so it's going to take me... Three steps to get to my answer. Trey, what would be step one? Um, what do you think? No, you're right. I am going to need to divide at some point. Eric? Yes, you have to move first what is not connected to your variable. Okay, so move that first and now bring down your 4b squared equals 196, and then what can you do? All right, go ahead and finish it up. Go ahead and finish the problem. Okay, so now what do you do? Yeah, divide both sides by 4, thank you. B squared equals, square root it, B equals, good, y'all are really catching on to that positive negative, that's awesome. Alright guys, that's everything you need to know for 9.1, and that's a wrap.